The Lord is here. Almighty God. Just weeks before his first appointment in the Anglican Church in 1985, Simon Bailey had been told he was HIV positive from a gay relationship. In those days, um, people were saying most people didn't go on to develop AIDS. I suppose I assumed I was going to be one of the ones who didn't develop AIDS. Simon's task at St. Leonard's Church in Dinnington, a pit village with an uncertain future, would not be easy. But he approached it with relish, not aware of how ill he would become. Yet within seven years, Simon's sickness was clear. The church's reaction is usually to resign and go and uh, go away and hope these things will go away too. And of course they don't. And I suppose that's the very reason why I don't want to resign. Still many parishioners stood by Simon in his hour of need. It didn't worry me that he was a priest and was gay. I've known since just after he came. I wasn't going to uh, go broadcasting it because I didn't know what the position was with people. My husband was very anti-homosexual and it did cause trouble that time. But I didn't stop going to church even though my husband did. The Lord is here. Simon was offering communion until just two weeks before his death from AIDS at the age of just 40. John Cundy, BBC Look North, Dinnington. Well, Rosemary joins us now. Rosemary, your brother really was a pioneer because he was the first British priest to admit to having AIDS, but he wanted to go to his first position, didn't he, in South Yorkshire, he was determined to. That was very daring of him at the time, wasn't it? I think so. That was his decision to um, to stay in his parish. That was it had happened before. There were other priests who'd um, had to leave and been quietly sort of pensioned off, and looked after by the church, of course. But he, for him, it was important to stay because that was his whole life. That was what, that was why he was there, and he um, felt very strongly that he that he needed to stay there. And he'd already by then been there long enough to have established a really close and very loving relationship with so many people there that by when he came finally came to the point where he needed their support they were ready to do so and to me that's the most remarkable and thing that you know that I think it's really important to remember is the way the community looked after him because when he was very ill and needing this 24-hour care supervision, they rallied round, got a rotor together, didn't they, so that they were there for him. I mean, that is so touching, isn't it? That was what was it? remarkable, and that was, of course, why the BBC made this documentary. One, the Archdeacon came along one day to a prayer meeting, and there was Simon sitting there on, his, on the sofa with his drip, and everybody sitting around him, you know, just talking, just accepting it, being quite natural about it, and it was just a remarkable thing. It says the volumes about the community, doesn't it? Because I don't know whether you would necessarily have expected that kind of reaction from the parishioners in Diddington, would you? Well, I think that's exactly what... That, that's, that's, that's really the whole point. Indeed, his doctor said, when I talked to him much later, that that was been one of their real anxieties, was the kind of response he might get from, you know, a, a tough mining village where people have been through a lot of struggle and stress mm. themselves. Um, how sympathetic would they be? But in the end, perhaps, I don't know, maybe that's why they were so supportive. They had, they'd been through a lot themselves. And he'd been very supportive of them also, both in terms of his m traditional ministry and also setting up um, there was a, a miners memorial. I mean, the, you know, the pit had gone. It would have been just, every, that whole history would have gone. But now there's a permanent memorial in the church to the miners that died there. And I think all of that worked towards creating a community but feeling. Briefly, Rosemary, the community accepted him, but he found it difficult to tell your parents, didn't he? He found that very hard. Well, actually, it's a bit, I mean, my father had died just at about the same time that Simon started to get ill enough for it to become apparent that he was ill. So I think those things might have been connected. Um, I think he just didn't want us to suffer. I don't think it was so much that he, I mean, certainly, from, you know, my mother was incredibly supportive of him. And indeed, after my father died, moved to Dinnington as well. So she lived through the whole thing. She was there in the village, um, you know, through, through, throughout it all, which was um, very supportive indeed. So I think it was more that he wanted to protect us than it was than any kind of fear of, of our reaction. Thank Rosemary, you, Rosemary. We could talk for a long time about this. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.